right, Rick. So our next topic brings us to uh, some more HBO Max drama. Um, you know, despite the rocky launch, uh, with you know, we kind of touched on it last week with them not being available on you know some popular streaming platforms and a lot of content just not even being there. And then, I mean, aside from just stuff really not being there, they didn't really have any uh original content to drop it with either. Yeah, and um. Now, kind of some more, like I said, again, coming out where they're apparently going to be losing a bunch of live-action DC movies that they uh, kind of marketed the platform having. So yeah, they, this, uh, yeah. This comes to us from Collider, where I'm getting like the full article here. And uh, now, HBO Max has not released an official statement as to the reason the DC properties... DC properties are going to be leaving HBO Max at this time. Um, I have seen some reports come out uh, since this initial news drop that is suggesting that they're going to be putting the DC films on some sort of rotation. So only having like some of them available for X amount of time, then pulling yeah. them more out, which I don't really understand why they would do that. Well, those are probably some of their more popular movies on there. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, like I said, I was... The only like kind of like negative thing I had from this or like it was just kind of shady to some capacity. Like only because they were using a lot of these DC properties in their marketing for the HBO Max platform. Yeah. Like you were watching it, all the, a lot of HBO Max like TV spots for just advertising the you know the streaming service itself. They were lending they were lending to the fact that they, they have all these DC properties. Like, and this is going to be the place you come to get the DC properties. Well, assuming that like, HBO Max is still around when it comes out, at least they've got the Snyder Cut in 2021. Well, HBO Max definitely isn't going anywhere. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that's the thing. And that's like I said last week. If, I know they needed to get it out. They needed to get HBO Max out to the people. Yeah. But it would have really been, like, better if they kind of, like, I don't know, had some additional properties and had some things like ready to go for HBO Max to yeah. kind of make it more compelling. Cause now well, it makes it more desirable. Like, well, yeah, exactly. And now you're, you're in a position where as a consumer, you were advertised a, a product, HBO Max, like it's got all this new DC properties, all the stuff that HBO has. And like, this sounds great. And then, Oh, it's not on Roku. Oh, it's not on Amazon, you know, fire TVs. Like, and yeah, oh, yeah. it's not on this and that. And then, no, oh, man. here's new news. They're going to take away like half the DC movies that are even on there. Right it now. just gets worse and worse. Yeah. So it's like, as from a consumer standpoint, that's not very, you know, encouraging. So I don't know. Um, if I had to guess, I'm assuming that these DC movies that are leaving are probably just wrapped up in other licensing agreements with other streaming services yeah, right now that's very possible so considering that warner media owns dc uh, and all the dc properties there's inevitably going to be no other place that will have them yeah so i mean the only other place that even has them um like kind of on an exclusive level is the dc streaming service which i'm sure it's going to be absolved soon because of hbo max coming out anyway yeah, yeah. so i mean because that service is just becoming more and more i mean useless to some capacity because i mean the only the only thing that separates the dc streaming service now is the fact that you can watch comics or you know like, literally like they have the comics uploaded to the service so you can just watch them all digitally and read them all digitally rather that's pretty cool so i mean that's but that's the only thing separating the service now because before just like hbo max should you know didn't really have any sort of exclusive content to get people in like into subscribing to the the service who wasn't already going to have it just because they already have hbo yeah um like the dc universe app had original content planned like it did the titan show it had the swamp thing show coming it had like all these shows yeah but now you like Doom Patrol is going to be on HBO Max. It's not going to be on the DC Universe. I mean, they might put season two on there, but I, I've the the articles that came out about like Doom Patrol season two, it said like that's moving to HBO Max. Yeah, and then like uh, the Star Girl shows on like CW now, the Harley Quinn animated shows playing on like FX or something, uh, or Sci Fi Channel or something. It's like 
all the things that made the DC Universe streaming service an exclusive place for all the DC content is essentially going away because yeah, which... as, as a result of HBO Max. Because obviously, why would they have HBO Max and the DC streaming service? Well, it makes you, like you said earlier, it makes you wonder how long is the DC streaming service even going to be around after HBO Max? You know? Exactly. Which is like... I, I wish they would just be a little bit more transparent with it. Because, like, the DC streaming service, the the main thing it has going for it is the comics and the price point. The DC yeah. streaming service is, like, 7 or $8 a month. Look. Whereas, yeah, HBO Max is, like, $15, $16. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, but, I mean, that's just how much HBO has always cost, so it's not like they made HBO Max more expensive. No. So, I mean, which is fine, but the fact that they're, like, I don't know, we're moving titles you know, like advertising that stuff's going to be available and then removing it. And then even, even if they were to go for some like, Oh, we're just going to cycle them on and off. Like that's, that's also like, I think bad for business. Yeah. Definitely. Cause that's not appealing. Like, uh, it's, it's not, it's, no, it's you don't especially... have to wait for your favorite movie to like cycle in. Yeah. Especially when you have to pay a premium price. Yeah. Cause HBO max at this point is like the most expensive streaming service. Like, as it stands. Like, they might have arguably the best content that you could watch on it. It may not all be available right now. Yeah. But, I mean, arguably, they probably do have... I mean, they're the cream of the crop when it comes to content. I mean, HBO has Game of Thrones, you know, The Wire, Sopranos, all the movies they make, you know, and then Warner Brothers with their huge catalog. Yeah. I mean, it just... Obviously, HBO Max will be a great streaming service at some point. But as it stands right now, like I'm, like I said, assuming that like they've got all these deals in place with uh, other streaming platforms where they can't exclusively even have their own properties on there is kind of, I don't know. It's kind of unfortunate for them and it's unfortunate for the consumer as well. Like I, I wish they would have kind of held off on just the product itself until they had some more firm ground to do, you know? Yeah. I mean, because the launch itself was just bad. Like when you can't even be on all platforms, they had nothing new. Like I don't know. Yeah, uh, it wasn't a very good launch. It was no, launch. no. And like, and it'd be fine if they would have like, I don't know, didn't advertise all the stuff that was going to be there, and then all of a sudden it's not there. Yeah, I think that's the big. That's the only problem I really have. That's a lot of it. people off. Yeah, I mean it did. And that's why that's why it's in the news, you know? That's why this is that's why this huge article is here. Like yeah, again, it's a on, big deal. Yeah, you know, like on Collider here is where I was getting this information from. So I don't know. It's kind of a rocky it looks like this HBO Max thing is just off to a rocky start. Is the only thing that uh is kind of disconcerting. But I'm sure in the end though, like I said, it will be probably I mean it's gonna be great, but it will probably be I mean the best bang for your buck when it comes to a streaming service to have just because of the back catalog alone of Warner media's content and then HBO's content yeah, forever. Batman and Robin. Yeah. I mean, Robin was a cinematic master dude. I'll tell you what, man, <laughs> Batman and Robin is garbage, but it's fun to watch. It is fun it, to watch. It is Same fun. Batman to watch. Yeah. I, I like Batman. For, honestly, Batman forever. I don't mind. I think it was like, George Clooney playing Bruce Wayne that just killed me. For Batman and Robin, yeah. right? Like, well, no, here's the thing, too. With, with Batman and Robin, George Clooney was a pretty good Bruce Wayne. He, just, he was not a good Batman. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I thought Val Kilmer did a good job of both. Yeah. Um, n neither of the movies were really all that good, by any means. They had bat nipples. They, they did. <laughs> I mean, how could you? Everyone has nipples. I mean, obviously. Yeah, obviously your suit. Your suit has to have. How are nipples. people going to tell that you have those underneath? Yeah, like, I mean, especially for a male, the nipples are essential. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, they can be very protective. Yeah, what can me. you? What What can any dude do without nipples? I, you know? I don't know what I'd do if I lost mine. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just wear a suit that has them on there, so everybody thinks you still have your nipples. Maybe George Clooney lost his nipples. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, hopefully HBO go, HBO Max, I guess, rather, gets their act together here. And uh, it'll be good at some point. I'm sure it'll be good at some point. So. Yeah. But we'll just have to kind of wait and see. We'll have to smooth things out. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a rocky start, but there's nothing you can't recover from. Yeah. They've got the content to back it up. They've got the content to back it up. So I'm looking forward to it. Definitely. So what are your guys' thoughts on this HBO Max drama? Do you think the HBO will be able to recover and HBO Max will become a, you know, very predominant, if not the best streaming service that uh, is available? Kind of like what my initial impression is of it, uh, just based on all the content it has. Or do you think, you know, it's just off to a rocky start and now you're real hesitant about it going forward? Whatever it is, man, just let me know in the comments section below.